Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Oh, God. 
Iskan Samstap Acharya Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We read from the Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 3, Karma Yoga, text 10. Sahayagya prajashristva purovacha prajapati anena prasavishyadvam esha vos Stivshtaka Maduk Sahayagya Prajashristva Purovacha Prajapati Anena Prasavishyadvam Esha Vost Vishtaka Maduk Translation In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu, and bless them by saying, Be thou happy by this yagya, sacrifice, because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Please repeat. In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods, along with sacrifices for Vishnu, and bless them by saying, Be thou happy by this yagya, sacrifice, because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The material creation by the Lord of Creatures, Vishnu, is a chance offered to the conditioned souls to come back home, back to Godhead. All living entities within the material creation are conditioned by material nature because of their forgetfulness of their relationship to Vishnu, 
or Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Vedic principles are to help us to understand this eternal relation. As it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedais Chasarvayar Aham Eva Vedya. The Lord says that the purpose of the Vedas is to understand Him. In the Vedic hymns, it is said, Patim Vishyat Meshwaram. Therefore, the Lord of the living entities is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 2.4.20 also, Srila Shukadeva Goswami describes the Lord as Pati in so many ways. Shriya Patir Yagya Pati Prajapatir Diyam Patir Loka Patir Dharapati Patir Gatis Chandaka Vishni Sattvatam Prasidatame Bhagavan Satampati. The Prajapati is Lord Vishnu, and he is the Lord of all living creatures, all worlds, and all beauties, and the protector of everyone. The Lord created this material world to enable the conditioned souls to learn how to perform yagyas, sacrifices, for the satisfaction of Vishnu, so that while in the material world, they can live very comfortably, without anxiety, and after finishing the present material body, they can enter into the kingdom of God. That is the whole program for the conditioned soul. By performance of yagya, the conditioned souls gradually become Krishna conscious and become godly in all respects. In the age of Kali, the Sankirtan yagya, the chanting of the names of God, is recommended by the Vedic scriptures. And this transcendental system was introduced by Lord Chaitanya for the deliverance of all men in this age. Sankirtan Yagya and Krishna consciousness go well together. Lord Krishna in his devotional form as Lord Chaitanya is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.5.32 as follows, with special reference to the Sankirtan Yagya. Krishna Varnam Twisha Krishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam Yagyai Sankirtana Prayair Yajanti Hi Sumedasa. In this age of Kali, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtan Yagya. Other Yagyas prescribed in the Vedic literatures are not easy to perform in this age of Kali. But the Sankirtan Yagya is easy and sublime for all purposes, as recommended in the Bhagavad Gita also, 9 14. So this verse, as Srila Prabhupada says, gives the complete program for the conditioned souls. We have come into the material world in forgetfulness of Krishna in forgetfulness of our eternal relationship with Krishna. We all have an eternal relationship with Krishna, but we have forgotten him and our relationship with him. And 
Thus we have come into the material world. Uh, the scripture says that when one turns away from Krishna, uh, Krishna Bahir Muk Boga Vanchakari and desires to enjoy independent of Krishna, he comes into the clutches of Maya and is forced to suffer the threefold miseries. So we are all in the material world and we are all suffering the threefold miseries. Uh, adhyatmika, miseries caused by our own bodies and minds. Uh, adibotika, miseries caused by other living entities. And adidaivika, miseries caused by acts of nature. We're always being subjected to these miseries and we falsely try to counteract them by material means. But we cannot be successful uh, because the material world is like a prison and we fallen souls who have rebelled against God are placed in the prison and we are punished. Uh, and we're always being punished by one or two or all three of these different types of miseries. And no matter what we do to try to become free from them, we cannot become free. Uh, in fact, quite often the remedies that we adopt to counteract the miseries increase the miseries. Or as it is said, the, the, the cure is worse than the disease that it was meant to treat. So we're suffering in so many different ways and we cannot escape from the suffering by any material means. Uh, the only way we can gain release from the bondage of material existence is if we surrender to Krishna and revive our eternal relationship with him. Uh, Devi hiesa guna mai mama maya duratyaya the material nature, which is composed of the three modes, is very difficult to cross over. But mam evaye prapadyante mayam etam tarantite, one who surrenders to Krishna can easily cross over maya. And when the conditioned soul becomes aware of his predicament in the material world, of his, his fallen condition, of his miserable condition in the material world, and he realizes that his suffering is due to his having turned away from Krishna, uh, having forgotten his relationship with Krishna, when he becomes serious about reviving his eternal relationship with Krishna and becoming free from the miseries of material existence, he will take up the process of chanting the holy name of the Lord, especially in Kali Yuga. The chanting of the holy name is actually uh, recommended in every age, but it is of special importance in the present age because the other processes are impossible or very difficult, impractical. 
in the present age. And therefore this scripture says that what could be achieved in Sattva Yuga through meditation, which is not possible now, what could be achieved in Treta Yuga through Vedic sacrifices, which also is not possible now, and what could be achieved in Dwarpa Yuga by elaborate temple worship, which also is not practical now, can be achieved in the present age by uh, Sankirtan, by the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And elsewhere in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Japoham uh, Yagyosmi, that of all yagyas, I am Japa. I'm the chanting of the holy name. So the chanting of the holy name in Japa or in Kirtan is the way that we associate with Krishna. It's the way we purify our hearts of inauspicious desires and preoccupations. It's the way that we revive our eternal relationship with Krishna. And when we revive our eternal relationship with Krishna, then naturally we are freed from all material miseries. Lord Chaitanya told a story uh, to Srila Sanatana and Goswami about the son of a very rich man. His father had immense wealth, which he had buried in the property. But somehow he left the world without telling his son about the buried treasure. So an astrologer came to visit the sun. The astrologer was called Sarvagya. And the astrologer told him that you are the son of a very rich man. The son was actually living in poverty and misery. The astrologer said, you are the son of a very rich man. And your father has left a great treasure for you right on the property. And then the astrologer said, but don't dig on the northern side, because on the northern side there's a very dangerous snake that will bite you. And don't dig on the western side, I uh, forget the exact obstacle there, don't dig on the southern side, there are many wasps, insects that will sting you. Uh, you will not get the treasure uh, on the southern side or the western side or the northern side. But if you dig on the eastern side, then very quickly you will uncover the treasure and you will have great riches and automatically all of the distress of poverty will go away. So what is the meaning of this story? Uh, the Bhagavad Gita also says that the body is a kshetra, a field. Uh, 
And within, within us, within our body, within our heart, is the greatest treasure of love for Krishna. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema. Sadhya Kabunai. It is already there. It doesn't have to come from any other source. It's already there. Uh, now, if we dig on the southern side, there will be so many wasps and bees that will sting us. The southern side is um, fruitive activity, karma, karma kanda. And the western side, there's uh, impersonal liberation, uh, jnana, and the northern side, there's mystic yoga. But none of these will yield the treasure of love for Krishna and a revival of our eternal relationship with Krishna. But the eastern side is the process of bhakti, bhakti yoga. And by the process of bhakti yoga, especially the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, we will very quickly get the treasure of Krishna Prema, uh, our eternal relationship with Krishna. And then all of the miseries of material existence will automatically go away. Just like when, some, when someone <laughs> receives a great treasure, a, a great inheritance, inheritance, all the miseries of poverty go away. So similarly, when one achieves the treasure of divine love for Krishna, the treasure of Krishna consciousness, all of the miseries of material existence go away. So we become happy. We become happy in this life and we achieve liberation. We get everything. But there's also a question of the quality of the chanting. Uh, there are statements in the scripture to the effect that by chanting the holy name once, one is freed from the reactions to more sins than he is able to commit. And that's why we're suffering. Uh, we suffer because we're of, of sins. We're, we're suffering the reactions to sins that we've committed. So the scripture says that by uttering the holy name once, one can become freed from the reactions to more sins than he can commit. And Srila Prabhupada comments that there's no exaggeration to such statements. Such statements are true. But the effectiveness of the chanting depends on the quality of the utterance. Uh, if one is proud, if one is absorbed with false ego, one will not be able to chant with genuine feeling. Only one who is a kinchana or niskinchana, free from the sense of false ego, free from the sense of false proprietorship. Only he or she can chant with genuine feeling. And when one chants the holy name even once, with such genuine feeling, one gets relief from all suffering, all the reactions to sinful activities. Uh, it doesn't mean, I mean often a kinchana is taken to mean without material possessions. 
Akinshana Gotra, Krishna is the property of those who are Akinshana. And we see that there were sages in the past who lived practically without material possessions, just engaged in chanting the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But our recent exemplars, mentors, acharyas, uh, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, they had institutions for preaching Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada founded the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. We are in a building, quite a nice building. Uh, nice floors, nice ceiling, nice furniture, nice artwork. Uh, we have a nice restaurant with nice food. Um, so does it mean that the devotees here are unable to chant with genuine feeling because they are surrounded by material things? Not necessarily. Uh, it is a matter of the consciousness. A kinchana means without material possessions. But when we preach, we use material things, but not for sense gratification, but for Krishna's service. Ana saktasya vishayan. We engage the objects of the senses, but we are not attached to them. Uh, Nir bande Krishna sambande yukta vairagya uchate. We see their relationship to Krishna and we can utilize them in Krishna's service. So if we are in the temple or even in our own home. And if we think that Krishna is the proprietor, none of this is mine, none of it uh, is meant for my enjoyment, independent of Krishna. All of it is meant for Krishna's service. Then we are a kinshana. We are a kinshna. Near mama, near ahankara. We are without the sense of false proprietorship and without the sense of false ego. And we can be in that consciousness whether we're in the temple or at home or in the office, uh, anywhere. It, it's a matter of consciousness. And if we're in that consciousness, then our only possession, if you will, is Krishna. No one can be without possessions, uh, but the, the, the devotee, a kinchana, or niskinchana, he has no material possession. His only possession is Krishna his love for Krishna, his service to Krishna. And Chaitanya Charitamrita also says the same thing, that one can, un that he or she who has no other possession than the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, he or she can understand the truth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that is our only possession. In material consciousness, we think in terms of the body, I and mine. I am the body, and everything related to the body is mine. 
my wife, my children, my parents, my house, my car, my business, my bank account. Uh, but that sense of false ego and false proprietorship has to be given up. But doesn't mean then, okay, we merge and become one with God? Not at all. That's not at all our goal. That's, for a devotee, that's worse than hell. Kaivalya Narakayate. The Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati says that uh, the, the thought of merging, you know, oneness, impersonal oneness, is hellish. Actually, hell is better than merging. Because in hell, you can chant the holy name, you can serve the Lord. But if you merge into the impersonal Brahman, you can't chant, you can't serve. It's, so, Kaivalya Narakayate, impersonal merging is worse than hell. Um, and it also, uh, elevation to the heavenly planets is like a phantasmagoria. Uh, it has no substance, it's just like a dream, temporary dream that doesn't last or give satisfaction. So, but niskinchana or akinchana, it doesn't mean that we, that, uh, yeah, near mama, near hankara, being free from false proprietorship it doesn't mean we have nothing. Being freed from false ego doesn't mean we merge and become one with God. But it means that we realize our actual identity. Uh, we're free from false ego, but we have a real identity as eternal servants of Krishna. It's like someone may be mad. He might think, I am... Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, or I am Mahatma Gandhi, I am Theodore Roosevelt. So to realize that I'm not Mahatma Gandhi is good, it's good to know. Uh, but okay, I'm not Mahatma Gandhi, but who am I? You should know who I am. So to know that I'm not the body, that's good. That's good, you're not the body. You know that. But who are you? I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. Uh, and I have no material possessions, nothing belongs to me, that's good. But you can't live without anything. Then what do I have? I have Krishna. I have my service to Krishna, I have the holy name of Krishna. So that sense of I and mine, uh, I am the body, and everything related to the body is mine, that has to be purified to I am, I am Krishna's, and Krishna is mine. That is, <laughs> that is the perfection of I and mine. I am Krishna's, and Krishna is mine. And that is the beautiful, loving reciprocation between Krishna and the devotee. The devotee gives himself to Krishna. I am Krishna's. And reciprocally, Krishna gives himself to the devotee. Krishna is mine. And we can achieve this by chanting the holy names in the right mood, in the right consciousness. But to develop the right consciousness uh, to chant properly also takes practice. Srila Prabhupada said practice makes perfect even in spiritual life. Uh, bhaktiya sanjataya bhaktiya. That bhakti comes from bhakti. Uh, prema bhakti or pure love from Krishna comes from sadhana bhakti or or practice. The perfection of Krishna consciousness comes from the practice of Krishna consciousness. It's all Krishna consciousness, it's all bhakti, just different stages. So 
we begin in the stage of practice, uh, sadhana bhakti, and practice makes perfect. We have to practice chanting the holy name with attention. Uh, chanting with attention automatically means without false ego and without false proprietorship. When there's false ego and false proprietorship, we can't chant with attention because chanting with attention means we're absorbed in Krishna and false ego and false proprietorship means we're absorbed in I, I am the body and everything related to the body is mine. Um, Yesterday I had a little telephone conversation with Ravindra Saruk Prabhu and he was saying that sense gratification is practical atheism. <laughs> sense gratification means there's you, your body, the senses of your body in in contact with the objects of the senses. So in that relationship of the senses with the objects of the senses, where's God? He's not there. There's no room for him there. Sense gratification means atheism in practice. And reviving our relationship with Krishna means the opposite, no sense gratification, no material sense. There's spiritual sense gratification, if you want to call it that. Devotees get tremendous pleasure out of chanting, but that's spiritual. That happiness comes from Krishna's happiness. That's not trying to enjoy independent of Krishna, but that's giving Krishna pleasure and taking pleasure in his pleasure. And that is how a devotee perceives pleasure and experiences pleasure by giving Krishna pleasure. And that is his healthy condition because we are part and parcel of Krishna. Just like the hand is part of the body, the hand is meant to give food to the stomach. When the hand gives food to the stomach, the nutrition and the satisfaction is distributed to all the other parts of the body. Uh, Srila Prabhupada told us a, a story, I think it's like a little Bengali proverb, or maybe Sanskrit, that um, the the different limbs of the body decided to go on strike because they thought, you know, we're doing all the work and the stomach's getting all the benefit. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to work, we're earning the money, we're going shopping, we're buying the food, we're cooking the food, we're you know, putting the food in our mouth. We're doing all the work and it all goes to the stomach. The stomach gets all the benefit. So they decided to go on strike. And guess what happened? <laughs> they all got weak. They all got weak. They, they were almost finished. Then they had another meeting. <laughs> of, the union had another meeting <laughs> and they decided we were better off when we were feeding the stomach. So Krishna is like the stomach. If we serve Krishna, all of the different parts and parcels are nourished and satisfied. And if we become crazy and we decide to go on strike, and not serve Krishna, we're the losers. And actually we're all more or less crazy, that's why we're in this material world. 
it, I, it's a correctional institution. I mentioned prison. We could, we could say it's an insane asylum <laughs> for all the people who thought they could become God and enjoy independent of Krishna. So we want to get out of this madhouse uh, and the way to do so is to rectify our criminal mentality, our rebelliousness, and come back to our original position, our eternal uh, position as e eternal servants of Krishna. Then we can be released from the prison and, and enjoy life as free souls. And that can be achieved by sincere, attentive chanting of the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. On a practical note, I may mention that in June, there will be two Japa retreats specifically for the purpose of helping us to chant the holy name in the proper mood, in the proper consciousness. Um, I'm not sure of the exact dates. Uh, there will be four wonderful uh, facilitators. Uh, Ravindra Saruprabhu, <coughs> whom I just mentioned, will be uh, maybe the main speaker in terms of the philosophy. And then there will be Mahatma Prabhu, who lived in Dallas for many years. And Arch, I think Archana Siddhi Mataji. And then Badahari Das Prabhu will be there to lead Kirtan. He's the, the best, one of the best in the movement. So. Um, I will also be back in June for Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj's Vyas Puja and uh, Mother Kirti does Disappearance Day. And I believe the retreats start just a little after that, so maybe if the timing works, I might drop in for a day or two. <laughs> But uh, I, I do recommend it. I've, I myself have uh, participated in many <coughs> Japa weekends and Japa retreats, and they can really transform your consciousness, which is what we need to do. We need to transform our consciousness from I and mine in the material concept to I am Krishna's and Krishna's mine. We need to transform our lust, our selfish desires, into pure love, into prem. And that can be achieved by uh, the, the chanting of the holy name, uh, sincere chanting of the holy name, combined with Krishna's mercy. If we make that effort, to revive our relationship with Krishna through properly chanting and sincerely pray to him for his mercy, pray to the holy name for mercy, pray to the previous acharyas for mercy, pray to the spiritual master, pray to the Vaishnavas, then we can uncover that great treasure that lies within all of us Krishna Prem and enjoy eternal life with Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions or comments? Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu. Thank you.
Um, <clears throat> in terms of being free from material miseries, currently, for instance, a lot of people are becoming unemployed and causing great distress and losing their homes. Some of us have lost jobs. And how does relieving us from material miseries relate to situations like that, where we are living in a country that is starting to around the edges, so to speak. <coughs> Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu is asking how being free from material miseries relates to the uh, economic crisis and the uh, resultant distresses? Well, a devotee who has surrendered to Krishna is protected by Krishna. I've never heard of any devotee dying of starvation. In fact, I've heard some devotees say that our austerity in Krishna consciousness is we have to eat too much. <laughs> I know, when we preach, <laughs> that's the, so devotees never die of starvation. Uh, Krishna gives the devotee what he needs. He might not give the devotee what the devotee wants, <laughs> but he'll always give the devotee what the devotee needs. We may have more than we need, and under certain circumstances we might have to reduce because we can't afford. It could be, not necessarily, but it could be but we'll always have what we need and we'll always be able to chant and serve Krishna. When, when uh, Vamana Dev, uh, Krishna in the form of a uh, s s small Brahmin, dwarf Brahmin, came to Bali Maharaj, who had conquered the entire universe and asked for charity. Because Bali Maharaj was successful because he was very charitable and he pleased the Brahmins by giving in charity and by their mercy and their blessings he was successful. He, he, conquered the entire universe, practically. So Krishna, knowing Bali's uh, nature uh, and his uh, faith in giving charity to Brahmins, he came as a Brahmin, just as a little Brahmachari. And he, and he asked for charity. And Bali Maharaj said, yes, you can, you can have whatever you like. So Vamana Dev replied, I want three steps of land. Just three steps. So Bali Maharaj said, you know, I could give you a whole planet. <laughs> and you're just asking for three steps of land. And... Vamana replied that if I cannot be satisfied with three steps of land, then I, could, I, I won't be satisfied even with the three worlds. Because we don't need that much. And if we're greedy for more and more and more, we'll never be satisfied no matter how much we have. We'll always want more. And Prabhupada said a brahmachari just 
needs three, three steps, uh, you know, like a six feet, a place on the floor to lie down, and a little prasad and a little service. That's all he needs. Krihasta ashram is more complicated, <laughs> but still, uh, we may not need all that much. Um, we might be used to having more, but we don't need it. And it, ultimately everything depends on Krishna. Once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approached Srivas Thakur, so one of the Panchatattva, he said, Srivas, I see that you never do any work. You have no livelihood. Uh, how, 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 you know, how are you going to maintain your family? And Srivas Thakur replied, uh, I'm sorry, but I cannot work. <laughs> and uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but then Srivas, if that's your mood, then you should take sannyas. <laughs> and Srivas replied, my Lord, uh, I cannot do that either. <laughs> And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, well, then how will you live? And Srivas Thakur went. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and Srivas Thakur replied that if three days pass and I don't get food to eat, if my family and I don't get food to eat, then I will drown myself in the Ganges. Um, but actually he had faith that Krishna would provide. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, uh, Yoga Kshema Bajam Yaham. That one who is fully devoted to Krishna, Krishna provides, it preserves what he has and provides what he lacks, carries what he lacks. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became so ecstatic hearing Srivas Thakur's faith, he began to. He, he, he said, Srivas Thakur, I declare that no one in your household will ever go hungry. Even if the goddess of fortune herself becomes poverty stricken. <laughs> but you and everyone in your household will never be hungry. And I will personally ensure that you that you have whatever you need so that is that is the faith of the devotee and that is the lord's reciprocation uh, with the faithful devotee we just have to keep chanting <laughs> Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai.